Well, now we start the wiring uh, on the LS swap. Um, it's kind of a mess right now. It uh, is kind of confusing. Uh, I do have wires marked, but it's going to be a lot of find the wire, go back to the paperwork, trace it, verify it. Um, so it'll be time consuming, but in the end will be worth it. Uh, you can see the spaghetti mess I have here. All these wires. The other side, I got a lot of wires over the engine. Just a lot of wires dangling everywhere. So I am currently under the Jeep. I just uh, got this out of the exhaust, the muffler shop, and they ran a whole new exhaust system. So I was going to show you what that looked like. They ran it down, had to go around the front of the pan, come up, I got two cats, then it comes here to the back to some MagnaFlow and up and over. I ran two and a half inch um, all the way back and I wanted to do dual exhaust, but I could not do that because of the catalytic converters, which has, has to go back on and routing it through. So it just got single exhaust. Plus there's nowhere out on the driver's side rear to really put the um, uh, exhaust pipe. It's, uh, it's really crowded there. So it's single out the back, but it's still gonna sound good. The original Jeep harness had three um, plugs that went into the PCM. Two of the three went directly to the engine and then back to the uh, transfer case and all the way back to the fuel pump. The third one has a bunch of um, stuff that we need in it. So I've taken the plug apart and you know, got all the wires out of it. Uh, here's all my pieces right here um, of the plug. I'm going to identify the wires I don't need and pull those out of the harness. And some of these, like there's a fuel pump relay switch, I mean wire, uh, that I'll need to hook back up to the fuel pump. So some of these I will use, some I won't use. And then the original engine harness had two plugs up here at the um, up here they attached here to the firewall and they went down to the um, I don't know when they went to the uh, injectors and all over so a lot of these wires that are in here I'm not going to use so I will identify those and then pull those out the object is the same as I did with the engine, is to get rid of all the wires in this stock harness that I don't need um, so that there's just not wires sticking out everywhere. And then the ones I do need, integrate those into the LS harness. The next step was to take all the wires that were out of that C plug, the third one in the PCM, which I disconnected last night, and I've identified them with Red tape, which means I do not need them. White tape, which means I'm not exactly sure. And green tape, which means I do need them and they're gonna go someplace from the distribution block and tie into the LS wiring. So now that these are all marked and identified, I've started to take them out. And these two plugs here, which used to go to the engine management and uh, back to the fuel pump transmission. Uh, these will be deleted. The wires that came into this, I will be reusing and tying those into the system. Some of them will just be tied back into here that go on to the, say, the dashboard and uh, some will tie into the new PCM for the LS motor. The next thing that I'm gonna do now is identify these wires and then delete this, delete all these. Half of these wires right here um, are already identified as needed or not. 
and so some of these um, uh, go back to the distribution block those will be easy to find out some of these go off up under the dash so there will be a little tougher because I haven't found these plugs in my wiring diagrams which are right here this is the PCM all the way over and that is the C3 plug and then I have the distribution block so all of that is what I'm using to identify the original Jeep wiring harness paperwork all right the progress that I made today is pretty good um, there's still plenty of time I'm not done um, but I wanted to show you what I got so far I'm mounting the um, PCM here here's my connectors this is the LS wire harness comes up here it's going to tie into the stock Jeep wire harness these wires here are, um, they go to OBD2, they go to the uh, speedometer, they go to gauges. Um, so these are going to get put into a plug and tied into the system. These right here are my powers that need to be put onto relays. Um, these will go over to my um, stock box over there that has all the relays and the fuses in it and those will get tied in instead of standalone they'll get tied into the system right here this is where it will break off the bundle go down into the engine for all the engine control um, the um, injectors all that stuff then we come over to this side These wires right here, these come up from the back, speedometer, fuel pump, fuel gauge, um, descending unit, all that stuff. So these are going to get tied into those wires over there through the wire bundle. Then it comes over here and back here into the stock uh, power distribution block. I've also identified all these wires here as unused circuits. One was for AC, uh, there's a couple other ones. So these are going to go to those solid color wires over there, the yellow and the green, um, that will be hooked into relays in the stock box. So anyway, it still looks kind of like a mess right now, but it is an organized mess. Tonight, I am back out here working on the Jeep. And from the last time I did a video till now, it's changed quite a bit and uh, got a lot done. So I will uh, show you where we're at. So here's my wire bundle. Goes across. Um, the only thing is this right here is my vehicle speed sensor. And I got to figure out how the two wire GM is going to hook up to the three wire jeep um, I had to re add a new wire from the alternator to the battery and I think I did an overkill I got number four wire and uh, ran that around it looks like it may have been like number one wire originally but should have good electrons flowing through that wire um, and then this is all gonna get tucked up in the wire loom um, this right here is my new gas gauge, gas, uh, oil pressure, and water temperature. So I gotta run this over to where it's gonna go into the dash. But uh, last video I had, it was a big rat's nest, and now it's pretty well done. I also have so many accessories, I was like, I don't know how to get them all they were all around my battery I didn't like it so what I did was I got this from Home Depot it's a ground block so I put those on a piece of uh, cutting board and attached those where my PCM used to be and now I'm gonna hook all the powers into there and I got one up there to hook into the ground and then all I'm gonna do is take a wire from 
this big hole right here and tie it into the positive on the battery and from this big hole here tie it into the positive on the I mean the negative on the battery and then all my accessories will be right here uh, they're all fused most all have inline fuses on them um, and then I have another battery that will stack here and it will protect it. Um, I also have some cutoff pieces that I can put across to um, help in case something falls back there it doesn't short out. But anyway, we'll see how that works. I thought it was a good idea at the time, but uh, time will tell. So I should have the wire, I'm going to have the um, uh, power distribution block bolted back in and all these wires buttoned up here uh, very soon. I'll wire loom all of this, get it hooked up into the original holdings and then I just have a few wires over there, mostly the OBD2 and stuff that goes under the dash So, uh, and the gas pedal. So anyway, I am getting close. So may not look like it, but I got a lot done. All right, so tonight I'm about ready to close up for the evening, but I got the um, power distribution block mounted um, and I got, well here, let me show you. So I got the block mounted again. Got all this in a loom, comes up here. So I got it loomed up to here. I found this wire here that I have got to run this is the key uh, for the starter. Uh, so this goes up to the key, which is what cranks the starter on. So I've got to run that all the way up. And so basically I'm buttoned up to here. This right here is going to slip over that area. Um, and then I got these wire ties on, but they're not tight yet. Um, and then it runs down. And then it comes up right to here. Now these wires right here, I've pulled out. These are extra circuits. I have two relays and two fuses, which I will not be using. So I'm going to take these in a separate loom. And I'm going to, these two big wires right here are going to run, hopefully, this is a power all the time. Uh, it's a power out, actually. I can use that for whatever. This is the, this will be for the um, cooling fan. And it has a relay, um, which will be this relay right here. That's my fuel pump. That was the auto shut off. Now that's going to be for the cooling fan. Um, and I don't know what that one's for. And that one's the starter. These are not used. And I can't find the stock um, spades that go in here. They're kind of a weird double. I wanted to use all of these for the uh, engine relays. So that didn't work. So I bought another power distribution block that I'm going to end up using for it. So anyhow, um, under the hood, it's starting to look pretty good. And... Now my accessories, um, I have to put a fuse, inline fuse on this, then I'll hook it up. Um, I also have my stinger for my dual batteries. Um, so I've got that bolted in. Uh, this wire right here is going to go to uh, keyed power, which I had in the box in keyed power. And then this just goes from one battery to the other battery. So. Um, I'll get these things uh, hooked up and then I'm just down to the driver's side with the OBD2 and just some miscellaneous stuff there and I should have that done by tomorrow. I accidentally found this wire tonight which um, yeah I have to. This came out of the PCM but so now I'm going to have to figure out if it goes to the PCM. Uh, the, the GM ECU or how I got to hook this up but this is my starter anyway 
It's looking good. 